In this video, we're going to look at utility maximization from a different angle. We're going to check out the flip side of utility maximization. What a lot of times in economics we refer to as the dual problem to utility maximization. Typically, what we've been doing with utility maximization is, is we give you a utility function. Okay, same thing here. And typically then what we would say is, okay, given these preferences and given two prices of two different goods, say the price of X is, is $2 and the price of Y is $1, and we give you a budget of $4 or $5 or however much, then the problem is to maximize this person's utility. How much X and how much Y should this person buy in order to get to the highest level of utility they can? In this kind of problem, the, the flip side or the dual, we don't do that. We don't give you a budget. So let me get rid of this budget right here. Instead of giving you a budget, instead we imagine that our, our goal, our thing that we would like to do is, is we say to ourselves, oh, you know, today is a beautiful day and I want to have fun today. How much fun do I want to have? Well, suppose you say to yourself, if you look at these uh, indifference curves, suppose you say to yourself, I want to have 10 fun. I want to have 10 utils of fun. So you say to yourself, self, if I want to have 10 utils of fun, then I can be anywhere along this kind of brown indifference curve here. And you say, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to have ten, get 10 utils. But here's the thing. You want to get the 10 utils in the cheapest way you can, you can get the, the 10 utils, right? You don't want to waste your money. So the flip side, the dual problem to so utility maximization, sometimes we call cost minimization. The goal, get 10 utils. So how do we solve this kind of problem? It turns out we do it exactly the same kind of way that we use when we're trying to find income and substitution effects. We use the same kind of logic and the same kind of math that we did for that. Here's what we want to do. We want to achieve two things. We want to achieve the 10 utils, and so that means that the output of our utility function here has got to be 10. So one equation we're going to use to solve this problem is x to the point 3, y to the point 6 equals 10. Since that's our utility function, we want to make sure we get 10 utils. That's fine. The second equation we're going to use is since it's, it's true that if the ratio of the prices, in other words, the slope of the budget line, is equal to the slope of the indifference curve, the marginal rate of substitution. If the slope of the budget line and the slope of the indifference curve are equal, then we are maximizing our utility for the money we're spending. And so if you want to get 10 utils, there you go, that equation will guarantee that. And if you want to do it in the cheapest way, we go back to our old standby equation that the marginal rate of substitution is going to be equal to the ratio of the price of x over the price of y. So the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. And remember, again, the marginal rate of substitution for a Cobb-Douglas function very simple you just use the two exponents here after after you take the derivatives and and everything cancels take the uh, exponents there 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.6 and the y is going to go on the top and the x is going to go on the bottom so that's our marginal rate of substitution function set it equal to the ratio of the prices 2 over 1 so that's one equation we're going to use. And then the second equation, as I mentioned, is the, that the utility equals 10. So all we have to do is solve these two equations. Here's number one, and here's number two. Two equations and two unknowns. So how are we going to do this? You take a minute. 
pause the video, see if you can solve these two equations for x and y, and then come back. Okay, so how would I do this? Well, this marginal rate of substitution function can be simplified simply to y over 2x. So let me go ahead and do that to get started here. Let me erase that point 3 and that point 6. And just replace that with a 2x. And so if we solve this for y, y equals 4x. Plug that into this utility function here for y. And we're going to have x to the point 3 times 4x to the point 6. It's not just x to the point 6, it's 4x to the point 6 equals 10. We can distribute this point 6 power to the 4 and to the x. And then we can collect the x to the point 3 and the x to the point 6. And we'll end up with x to the point 9. Um, times 4 to the point 6. Let me do that on my calculator here to see what I get. All right, I get something close to 2.23. So x to the point 9 times 2.3. Uh, yeah, about 2.3 equals 10. So then that gives us x to the point 9 equals 10 divided by 10.3 10 divided by 2.3 I mean so that's about 4.35 or so and now to get rid of that 0.9 power raise both sides to the 1 over 0.9 power which 1 over 0.9 is about 1.11 and so if we raise that to the 1.1111 power, what we end up with is about 5.12. So x is 5.12. Now let's check this out over here on our graph to see if that makes sense. So if x is just slightly bigger than 5, we're going to end up right around here. And so how many y's would we buy so that we make sure that we're on this indifference curve for 10 utils? Well, it looks like it's going to be about 20. Well, how many will it actually be? Well, we can go back to this equation right here. Well, y equals 4 times the amount of x that we buy. And so the amount of y will be 4 times 5.12, 20 20.48, about 20 and a half y's. Now, next thing we might want to do is figure out, supposedly this is the cheapest way to get uh, 10 utils, is by buying a little bit more than 5x's and a little more than 20 y's. Let's see how much that will cost, and then let's, just, let's think about this as a normal problem utility maximization subject to that budget and we'll draw a budget line and we'll we'll make sure that this point satisfies that kind of uh, the answer to that kind of problem graphically at least and so how much would this cost to buy well if X is two dollars a piece the X's are going to cost us about ten dollars and twenty four cents plus these Y's are a dollar a piece so that's going to cost us twenty dollars and forty eight cents and add those together we're going to end up spending thirty dollars and seventy two cents thirty seventy two let's draw the budget line for these prices and uh, what if our budget was thirty dollars and seventy two cents would the maximum utility be ten utils well let's see what that would be. So uh, if we spent all of our money, $30.72 $30 on Y, then we could afford 30.72 of them. So it'd be a point right about here, a little bit above 30. If we spent all of our money on X, since X costs $2 a piece, then that would mean about 15.36. Uh, 15.36 so the other end of our budget line would be right here just 
about 15. So if we connect these two points, that red optimum should be on there somewhere. All right, let me try that one more time. I held my pen in the same spot too long and it started selecting things. And sure enough, it looks like it goes exactly on that point where we wanted. So again, to recap what we were doing and why, this is called the dual problem. Instead of giving you a budget and maximizing your utility with that budget, instead we specify a level of utility and we're trying to find the cheapest way to achieve that level of utility. And by using two equations, one of them being our familiar slope of the indifference curve equals the slope of the budget line equation, and then specifying the level of utility we want to achieve in this utility function, just by solving these two equations for two unknowns, we can find a few things. I mean, how much X we want to buy, how much Y we want to buy, and I think very interestingly, how much money that would cost us. And then we can always double check to make sure that that budget line is indeed tangent to that point. It gives us a good way to, to double check our answer. Another useful reason for going through this kind of example is that this is exactly the same kind of technique we're going to use in later lectures when we're talking about a business trying to produce output. Here, think about the output as being how much happiness we get, right? That's output. But this could be 10 cars. If we want to produce 10 cars, how do we do it in the cheapest way? Using inputs. So instead of two goods we're consuming, these might be two factors of production. The, the rationale, the logic, and the mathematics are exactly the same in that kind of scenario. And so we'll be doing those in the next set of lectures.